Coming up, Sal helps rangers to clear beaches of ghost nets. Does it look like a couple of different nets? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Mel takes a step inside the lion's den. And Nikki plays Cupid with some Galapagos tortoises. There's a bit of action going on here, yeah. so they're, they're doing all the right things. <laughs> Mawalan and Banulu Marika are both traditional landowners. This remote coastline is their country. They're singing to and about the green turtle, the totem of their clan. It's a song that's been passed down through the generations. Uh, our fathers, 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 their fathers taught us when, since we was about little boy. Sal is visiting this unique land, which is Aboriginal-owned country few Belanda or non-Indigenous people get to see. But while the ocean looks beautiful, it hides a deadly threat to turtles and other marine life. Today we'll be looking for ghost nets along this main stretch of beach, and in them ghost nets um, we find turtles that are caught. Marion Pearson is a Dimaru Sea Ranger. From April till August, wind and sea currents wash lost or discarded fishing nets into the Gulf of Carpentaria. They're called ghost nets, as they continue to fish as if guided by a ghostly hand. Within minutes, they find their first washed up net. Let's have a look, it could be a turtle inside. After a quick testing pull, it's obvious this net is buried deep, so reinforcements are called in. Does it look like a couple of different nets? Yeah, there, there's a few caught up in there, yeah, different sorts. Need the big guns. Recognising the threat to the turtle species, the government funds 18 indigenous ranger groups to clean up the nets and rescue wildlife around the Gulf. Whoa! Phil Wise is a senior parks and wildlife ranger. So they're incredibly dangerous. They're indiscriminate. They kill anything, and they keep killing and keep killing until the nets wear out, which is many, many years. Counts to three. Oh. One, two, three. So far, the largest net found in the Gulf weighed five ton, stretched for four kilometres, and had a drop of 12 metres. So far this season, Dimaru rangers alone have successfully released nine turtles. Some like this one are barely alive. A lot of them are in really dire straits and to let them go out of a net is really satisfying. It's sort of why we're here as rangers, I think. We take our search up a notch later in the show. In the cat world, these guys are as big as it gets. So when it's time for a checkup, they have to be handled very carefully. Their training program develops behaviours that make it easier for the keepers to manage them. Jera? The aim here is so Kylie can see Jera's paws and make sure her claws aren't growing the wrong way. It means the lions don't have to be anaesthetised when certain parts of the body need to be checked. Mouth open. Mouth open. But when it's more than just a quick checkup that's needed, it's slightly more complicated. Today, Dr. David McClelland has invited Mel to help him with a health check on 17-year-old Jesper. But in order to examine this very lively girl, she'll need to be sedated. Something that's best done from a safe distance and preferably with a wire cage between them. It's not long before Jesper goes to sleep and the team can move her to the examination area. 
They will have to work quickly. In just 20 minutes, Jesper will start coming round. The first job is to take a blood sample. It's essential to get a full picture of her health. The lions get a general checkup every two years to check their teeth and general body function. All looks pretty good here. Plenty of chewing on raw meat and lots of bones means that even for old Jesper, there's a healthy set of gnashers for Dr. David to check up on. Something that would be impossible if Jesper weren't asleep. Look at the size of those claws. A bit bigger than your average Tom. And it seems Jesper's been looking after hers. Plenty of scratching on fence posts keeps them trimmed. The boys at the zoo get a bit lazy. And there's been cases where the claws curl round into the pads. So they have to be sedated to get a manicure. One up to the girls, I say. One, two, three. All that's left is a quick x-ray and Jesper is ready to be woken. And in just minutes, she's back on her feet. Jesper will be kept in overnight for monitoring. But by the looks of it, she's back to her old self and will be back in the enclosure with her family in the morning. Huge bottoms, folds of flabby skin and a ton of wrinkles. It doesn't sound pretty, but these girls make it look absolutely majestic. Yum Yum and Cuddles are two African elephants. Now in their late 30s, life is slowing down a little and they're enjoying a more tranquil lifestyle. As older elephants, their daily regime is gradually changing. Just like humans, joints start to deteriorate, and that has to be compensated for in their daily walks. As the only two African elephants in the country, these big beauties are extra special, although keeper Roger Brogan already knew that. Oh, you're lazy. They mean a lot to me, and all of us who work with them, we do get a special bond with them. You shouldn't say you've got favourites, but she's a bit of a character, this one. Give me a kiss. The day begins with a thorough checkover for the girls. The ears, teeth and trunk are carefully examined to make sure there are no objects stuck where they shouldn't be. African elephants have four big molar teeth, two at the bottom and two at the top. Oh, the breath's not too bad there, love, either. <laughs> That's one hell of a tongue, too. <laughs> it is. You can give it a touch if you like. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Ooh! <laughs> it's just soft and soft. She likes it. Look. Look. I can't believe I'm just touching an elephant's tongue. Oh, dear. Cuddles only has one tusk. She broke the other off years ago, but it will keep growing slowly till she dies. Cuddles has been a perfect patient. As a reward, it's bath time. <laughs> it. So just on and blast? Yeah? yeah, you can just turn that over and... Ooh, there we go. She's happy with that? Yeah. It's a daily ritual, so the keepers can check the old girl's skin and keep them clean. But later on, they'll be heading out for a dust bath. This is the way we wash the elephant, wash the elephant, wash the elephant. Nikki's children are going to be jealous when they hear about this. These big beauties also get daily pedicures, and Yum Yum's ready and waiting. I feel like a big kid myself. <laughs> oh, look at that. Ah. Just like the soles of our shoes, Yum Yum's feet have all the signs of good use. A good scrub clears the cracks in the skin of stones and twigs, which could otherwise cause infection if they were left in. With plenty of encouragement, the keepers were able to teach the girls to offer each foot, then turn and do the back feet. But that was years ago, and now they know the drill back to front. <laughs> so you can see there's a little stone oh, stuck in there. Oh, OK. Can you get that? And I'll get all the... I'll get the grass out, love. 
It's been a long day, but before these ladies of leisure retire, there's always time for a last treat. And a final kiss before we go. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call a kiss. Okay, no, Karen. Cuddles all, <laughs> cuddles all right, kid. You're cheeky. Yes, big really is beautiful. Good girl. Oh, you're sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, you guys gonna come and get weighed? Priscilla and Melissa are weighing these birds to check everything's okay. Well done. Priscilla's been working with animals ever since the age of six, when she started training the family pet dogs to jump through hoops and over hurdles. She also liked dressing them up, so now she's got her perfect job as a senior trainer at the wildlife park, where every day is an adventure, and she never knows what's going to happen. Wings up. Good boy. Melissa has had lifelong contact with birds and has found her perfect job working with the feathered stars at the park. She was taken out bird watching with her father and practically grew up with a pair of binoculars around her neck. So working with animals all day, training them and talking about them is just about the perfect job for these girls. Lefty is the adventurous one, whilst Righty does the following. Priscilla and Melissa use rewards as a positive training tool. For the Laura Keats, that means nectar. They only get a small window of opportunity to come down. If they don't respond immediately, the treat is taken away. That way, they learn to react quickly. Only natural behaviours are taught, so the birds aren't doing anything they wouldn't normally do in the wild. Wings up, Bill. <coughs> well done. There we go. So we always wait for the birds to um, do their best effort. If he only does um, you know, a bit of a half-hearted try, he doesn't quite get rewarded for that. He has to put in his best effort and then we'll reward him well. Before you know it, training's over. And it's showtime for the more experienced birds. This is the Jabiroo. Her weapon is her bill. It's razor sharp, it's like a dagger. And she will use that to spear fish and crustaceans. There's the barn owl. Her vision at night is probably about 35 times better than yours and mine. And there's the osprey, the world's only diving raptor. The osprey's going down again. An osprey can carry a fish up to its own body weight and dive from 50 metres above the water. No wonder Priscilla and Melissa are so fascinated by these birds. Oh, we have a ball. A lot of fun. We're laughing most of the day, even during the shows. Yeah. Um, you never know what's going to happen. But you can bet on one thing for now. The park's oldest bird resident, Gizmo the Barking Owl, has the final say. <coughs> OK, see if you can guess what this animal is. It weighs around 300 kilos. It can live for 200 years and its favourite food is prickly pear. Well, this lumbering and ancient it. big fella is the Galapagos tortoise. The five Galapagos tortoises at the zoo are understandably the oldest residents. But these two old-timers are acting like young lovers. So what could be the names of these two, do you think? Romeo and Juliet? Bonnie and Clyde? Uh, no. Otherwise known as T3 and A11. That's their name. Been like that for a long time. OK, Keeper Genevieve Peel mightn't think they're strange names, but I do, and they don't get any better. This is A31, our youngest female. As you can see, she likes to gnaw on sticks. This is A44, he's our second largest male, and um, he's on the prowl because he's a bit hungry. This is A28, our third male. He's just woken up from a snooze. The zoo desperately wants a little baby Galapagos, and that's where these lovebirds come in. Not to put too fine a point on it, 
but the zoo is trying to get these two to get it on. So are they doing the deed? Um, yeah, there's a bit of action going on, yeah. So they're, they're doing all the right things. Yeah, we're hoping that we'll get some eggs soon and maybe eventually some hatchlings. We've never successfully bred them and they've never successfully bred in Australia as of yet. Believe it or not, T3 is 80. Now, trying to become a first-time mum at that age may be impossible for humans, but not so for this spring chicken. A bit of free loving goes on. The girls have multiple boyfriends, which is the way they like it. Because of hunting and the introduction of predators, they're facing extinction. So that's why babies are desperately needed. So T3 is due for her checkup today. We'll check them once a week. Ever hopeful, the zoo staff regularly perform ultrasounds. And today, vet Michelle Campbell hopes for good news. Um, I guess what we want to know is whether they're, they're developing and doing the right thing to eventually become eggs. We'll have several Breeding Galapagos babies is extremely difficult, so the tension is high. Now, we do have something there, a follicle there. So it's that, I don't know if you can see. I did see when it moved, like two round things. Two round, yep white things, so there's one here yeah. and there's one down there. But are they eggs? They're follicles, so it's the equivalent of the yolk from the egg um, oh. before a shell would be laid down on them. So what's a big one? <gasps> it's 4.1 centimetres. That's actually the biggest one we've had yeah. from here, isn't it? Bingo! Things are looking good. If all goes well, these follicles will soon turn into eggs and then babies. We'd hope to have somewhere between 10 and 20. Right. Is that right, Genevieve? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been a happy day for everyone. And if all goes well, we'll have additions to this family soon. But if not, I guess practice makes perfect. Any babies are exciting at the zoo, but these would be a bit more special because it would be an Australian first and they're so greatly needed to help their numbers. The easiest way to access some of this remote country in Arnhem Land is by air. And that's how Dimaru senior sea ranger Balupalu Yunupingu searches for ghost nets and trapped live turtles. What do you think, Balupalu? Very bound up, isn't it? Yeah, the turtle doesn't don't get caught on this net. OK. Uh, a bit heavy. Yeah. Balupalu grew up on these beaches. He's been part of the Carpentaria Ghost Nets program since it began in 2004. Still more nets coming in. And this one was deliberately thrown up a wall. Okay. Yeah. After checking for live animals, a GPS reading of the net's location and a photo were taken. Got a knife and cut the sample of the net and we can go back and identify where they come from. And hopefully stop it. Yeah, hopefully. In three seasons, rangers around the Gulf have removed more than three and a half thousand nets from 500 kilometres of coastline. They're huge, aren't they? Big one, eh? These nylon nets are so tightly entangled, it's difficult to see if a turtle is trapped. When they are uh, like buried under there, they can die. Right. But when they're outside of surface, they outside of the net, they survive. Words alone can't express how Balu Palu feels when he sees these nets killing animals and washing up onto his country. No good, Jason. No good. Feel um, this put up yeah. rubbish are uh, landing on our beaches and yeah. yeah. So far this season, Dimaru Rangers alone have found and released nine live turtles. Senior Parks Ranger Phil Wise attached a satellite tracking device to two of them. Using the data, Phil can assess how soon a released turtle begins acting like a healthy turtle, if in fact it does. It's good to see the flippers working. This is a net the rangers found a few weeks earlier. They found two dead turtles in it, a hawksbill and an olive ridley, two of the six species found along these beaches. The team is managing to do a great job, but even they can't cover all the beaches, 
and have no idea how many turtles die caught up in nets out at sea. Even though we didn't find a trapped live turtle today, that in itself proves that the program of cleaning the beaches is working, and today was a success. The rangers have recorded some of the recent releases on video, but really, these are moments they'll never forget. You just have a really good feeling, and you feel very satisfied. So the rangers will keep checking and removing the nets one by one, knowing that it is making a difference. That's all until next time on Danger Wild Animals.